I saw Mission Impossible 7 last week. The embargo's up today. Let's rank all seven. No spoilers. Something had to come in seven, and for me, it's Mission Impossible 2. I think a lot of people shared this sentiment. The John Woo directing style just didn't suit how I saw the franchise. It was fun. It's a fine, serviceable thriller. It's just not quite as clever, and some of the stuff gets ridiculous. I just don't find myself re-watching this one much. Number six is number one. Not often does a franchise get so much better as it goes along when it starts this well. This first one is not bad. It's just the rewatchable factor for me here as well. This is a taut thriller. This is a very clever clever thriller, but what the franchise becomes is so much more my personal jam that this has to be second to last at number six. Giant leap in quality for my experience of these movies. This is my number five. I loved Rogue Nation. Rogue Nation is genius. Rogue Nation's like a B plus, but something has to land here. And for me, I just don't remember this one as well. I love that they kept Renner. I love that they've got these two great leading men, powerhouse agents, and Rebecca Ferguson coming into play. I love a lot of the elements of this film, but that's kind of where I stand. I love elements of this film. I don't remember as much of it as I do the rest. Which brings us to this weekend's Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 at number 4. Now this is tricky because if this was an action franchise, this would be like an A. But in the Mission Impossible standard, this is like a C plus, B minus for me. Some of the stunts had to use a, a decent amount of CGI, which takes me out of the Tom Cruise of it all. But most of all, I didn't love the villain as much as I usually love the villain. And I liked a lot of the AI commentary, but some of it felt like they didn't trust the audience. It went from being very clever to very uh, spoon-fed at times. Palm Clemente is, this is maybe my favorite performance of her. She is incredible. I love the role she plays here. Haley Atwell is a perfect addition to this franchise. As always, Rebecca Ferguson is a force. It has a lot of incredible pieces, but it, like too, is missing some of the cleverness in a lot of ways. But again, this is an A if it was just an action franchise. The stunts, the spectacle, the energy, the momentum, the journey, the joy, the watching of this movie is fantastic, but it lands at number four in a franchise of seven, which is crazy. Coming in at number three for me is Mission Impossible Fallout because of the stunt work, because of that insane dive out of the plane, because of the Henry Cavill blunt object to Tom Cruise's scalpel, because of the addition of Angela Bassett being a powerhouse, because we got more of the Ving Rain Simon Pegg background energy that I love, because we introduce a lot of really big concepts, and we let Rebecca Ferguson really flex her acting chops and be a powerhouse. This movie is a force of nature from beginning to end, and it somehow escalates a franchise this deep in. There's a lot of credit I give it for being a fifth movie that is this good. So this is number three for me, but to be honest, this one and Dead Reckoning Part 2 and Rogue Nation are all kind of tied at third. They're all very close to that B plus A minus range. Coming in at number two, this is probably a hot take, but Ghost Protocol is maybe the funniest balance of action and comedy for me in the script. I think the prop comedy of Dead Reckoning Part 1 is the funniest as far as physical comedy. I think this one is the funniest written movie, and it's not out of place. The tone shift really worked for me. I love the introduction of Jeremy Renner's character. I loved the climbing of the Burj Khalifa. I loved the amount of stunt work that allowed verbal comedy to really... Oh, I can breathe for a second because this movie is intense from beginning to end. This movie has some incredible car chase sequences. This movie introduces Jeremy Renner in a way that I really, you could see they were thinking about taking out Tom Cruise, but it didn't distract from the film. I love that both Renner and Cruise are both incredible as leading men in this film. And I love that it reestablishes a world after two didn't do that well, three was a big switch. And then four is like, okay, we're going in this new direction. And this is kind of where it shifted into what Mission Impossible is today. I rewatched this one probably the most, but my number one is Mission Impossible 3. This is the most intense, man. I think this is the one where Philip Seymour Hoffman's acting keeps up with Tom Cruise's intensity. The intensity of the villain and the intensity of our lead protagonist is off the charts. I love Michelle Monaghan. I felt so much for their relationship. I love that Aaron Paul pops in as a little brother in this. But most of all, I think J.J. Abrams' really intense directing and the fire in this film makes the stun sing in a different way than any of the rest of the franchise. I think 3 is the one I rewatched second to most because Ghost Protocol is a bit more fun. But this one is the bar for me of intensity. This is Jason Bourne level intensity, but within the cleverness of Mission Impossible. This is what I think IMF is at its best. I know a lot of people don't share this sentiment, but I think 3 is the tightest, the tautest, the tensest, the tomest. It is, uh, it's what I love about the franchise, but all of the rest all have their merits. This is just my personal number one. What are you thinking about Dead Reckoning, and how do you rank the Mission Impossible so far?